Hi weaving friends, it's been a little while since I made my last pot holder video and I did promise in that video to come back to do another tutorial that was slightly different to the last one. But what I want you to do is if you haven't seen that pot holder video, the very first one that I made, that video shows you how to make a little pot holder loom like this and exactly what you need to do to start using it. And in that video, we use some wool to make these little pot holders here. But what we're going to do today and what I talked about last time is to use some t-shirt yarn. And here are a couple of examples of the ones that I've made with the t-shirt yarn, like so. And the process is, in a lot of ways, it's very much the same, but in a few ways, a few key ways, it's different. And so that's why I wanted to come back and make this separate video. I told you in the first video that I did try sewing these loops together for the t-shirt yarn to try to make it like the loops that you can purchase and how that didn't go so well because it looked a little bit too messy. And so I abandoned the idea of using loops because they are just too expensive to buy here. But I still wanted to use the stretchy t-shirt yarn. I also have like a really healthy supply of t-shirt yarn. Um, I'll leave you a link down below. If you're in Australia, I can tell you where I got this t-shirt yarn. But I really wanted to use this. I've got a lot of this and it also just gives quite a different look and texture to using something like wool. This is quite very thick and um, this is a lighter thing. So the wool would be for something like making a lot of squares to sew the panels together for a blanket. But the t-shirt yarn, it's so robust and thick that it's better for something like an actual pot holder, maybe a trivet, whatever you want to use it for, but more um, something more practical in the kitchen. Okay, so let's start out like we did last time. Now, most t-shirt yarns that you will find that are available will be pretty much the same. The good thing about t-shirt yarn is, and this is an example of a roll, they come on quite a big roll usually. This is my red color. The good thing about them is they're actually a waste product. So they're produced uh, by places that use t-shirt fabric, but then they have all of these seamless offcuts and this is a great way to use those offcuts. So we start with the t-shirt yarn and the, the thickness of them is fairly universal, I believe. So your t-shirt yarn will look a bit like this, but what this is, is a wider piece of fabric that's rolled in on itself because that is a characteristic of t-shirt yarn. Jersey knitted fabric is, it will roll in on itself like that. But that makes it great for us because we just have this nice solid looking piece of yarn to use. So we start much the same way as we started with the wool. Remember the link to that video will be down below. I think it's really important that you watch that one first if you haven't already. And we can just make a slip knot with a little bit of a tail to start off. And I'm just going to start in the right hand corner just like I did with the very last um, tutorial. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten that up for now. And that's going to come off later. Now, in the first tutorial, when I started warping this little loom, I had wool that was way, way thinner. I can actually give you a little comparison. So I even used two strands of this wool, but in comparison, the t-shirt yarn is still way thicker, right? And so we're gonna do some things a little bit differently to accommodate for that thickness. So we can come up to the first nail, but instead of going around this nail right here and then back down to the first nail, we're gonna go around two nails. Okay, and then we can come back down and around these two nails. And that is the way we're going to warp for the t-shirt yarn. So always around two nails because we need that extra bit of space. When I was experimenting when my husband first made this loom for me, I tried warping it and weaving with just um, a single nail. So 
going around every single nail. And that was just extremely difficult to work with because the yarn was so thick. It made it really tricky to get um, start weaving through the spaces. They were really tight. And also it didn't make a really pleasing pot holder because it was just too thick. So around the two nails, right to the other side. And also with the t-shirt yarn, of course, wool has some elasticity, but t-shirt yarn even more so. So while I'm warping it, I'm not stretching it out and making it really tight because then that would cause the pot holder when I take it off the loom to retract in on itself like too much. And so I'm just putting it gently, matter of factly around the pegs without stretching it out. All right. Now, if I was going to use this very same yarn for the weft, I could actually go around and then in across that way, but I'm not going to be using the same yarn. I want the contrast between the white and the red. So I'm just feeding off a little bit more and I will cut the tail a few inches long. I like to cut tails slightly longer in weaving because I find in textiles more is always better than less. It's like if you make a garment for yourself and you make it too small you don't have many options but if you make it too big you have options you can take it in because you've got that that bit extra. It's the same in this kind of case. So what I'm going to do is just wind that around and lightly knot it on the first peg to my left. Oops, that did not knot. And I don't need to knot that really tight or anything, it's just like a holding point. So now I've got one knot on the left and one on the right, one for the beginning and one for the end. Then I can bring in my red yarn. Okay, so I'm gonna feed off a bit of the red. And if you remember from my last video, I showed you the tool that my husband had made for me to do this. He made this out of a coat hanger. And I think I mentioned in that video that it is slightly long. It doesn't need to be this long. Being, it, being that long actually makes it slightly inconvenient. But I asked him to make it that long because I thought I would probably need the extra length to get across the loom. But in hindsight, I'd make it a little bit shorter. So I do have the instructions for this loom on my blog and I will link to that below. It's also linked in that first video and it even includes a template for this wire if you wanted to make one yourself. All right, so starting over on the right and it doesn't really matter where I start exactly, like as far as the nails go, I can go up a little bit if it's more comfortable because one thing with using a hook like this and making it go through the warp, it can get a little bit uncomfortable if you are a bit squished. So you can kind of adjust things afterwards. I'll show you what I mean. It's easier to show than it is to tell. So I'm gonna start by going over the first two. So because I have gone around two nails or pegs at every end, I'm gonna treat these two as one. And so I'm always going to be going over or under two. So I'm going under the next one, over, under, and all the way across the same thing until I get to this side. Now I want to grab my red yarn, but I'm going to leave, guess what, a bit of a tail at this end. So I've fed a bit of a tail off and I'm going to be pulling from the actual cone of yarn so that that can feed. So as I pull it through, I'm angling my hook up, but then as I pull the yarn actually through the warp, I wanna angle my hook sideways because if I angle it up, it's gonna catch. So going sideways does the trick. Now, once I get to this side, I need to decide on the placement. I can take my hook out now and I've noticed too that my tail has gotten much smaller on this side. So I'm just gonna adjust that a little bit. 
by pulling a little bit more of a tail through just so that I've got that extra as an option like I already mentioned and I want this weft to also go around two pegs so I'm going to put it around the first two pegs and I'm going to nestle it in behind that knot so what I want to do here is make sure that my tail end is at the bottom which it is not so it's very easy to swap it over it's just like turning it over like that and then I can straighten it out in the actual weft row and now the tail is at the bottom and the working part is ready to go around the next two so now I'm going to bring my hook back in and again it doesn't matter the peg position where you bring the hook in what matters more is that you need to do the opposite pick up the opposite direction to what you did last time so first of all on this side I went over with the hook this time I'm going under and that's going to give me my plane weave okay so my yarn is in the correct position because it's around the next two and so all I need to do is grab that yarn and with my hook on the side I will bring it through the warp don't worry too much about what your tails doing because you can adjust that when you get to the other side and same with your hook you can take the hook out and then position on the next two pegs then I can kind of push that down a little bit and the aim here is to try to keep the weft approximately at the same spot on either side so that it doesn't become really uneven so now I'm ready to pop it around the next two pegs grab my hook last time I can see my hook went under so this time it's going over and then under over then under grabbing my yarn right to the other side and then I'm going to put it on the two hooks and push that down the two pegs sorry okay and you can see that this interlacement it's quite loose um, you could play around with the nails uh, with your spacing with the nails and see whether you know you like it a little bit tighter certainly with these ones that I've done previously these were a bit tighter you can see how dense they are this one as well so have a play and you know if you warped the loom and you're starting to weave and you don't really like it you think oh no that's too gappy um, I need it firmer than that then all you have to do is just undo it it's very easy to undo and you just reuse the same pieces of yarn for what else you want to try so there's no loss in experimenting okay feed some more yarn off the cone and then I'm going around the next two and coming in with the hook and starting by going under then over under over grab my yarn and if you find it difficult with the stretchy t-shirt yarn because it kind of moves with you a little bit um, you can always just finger manipulate like that okay so I'm going to the next two available pegs and popping that on there and then I'll line that yarn up 
tighten a little bit again you don't want to tighten too much because you know what happens then you're going to have a lot of drawing or you know retraction once it's off the loom okay so I'm going to just continue doing the exact same thing until I get as close to the top as I can get or as close as it's comfortable to get and then we'll have a look at taking it off the loom we're going to finish off here just the same way that we did in the first video with a basic crochet edging I've got my quite thick um, crochet hook this is a number 10 or a 5.75 millimeter hook that's not to say that you need to have that size but a thicker hook is a little bit easier to use with a thicker yarn now I just want to finish off my weft by cutting a tail and then just securing that with a light knot at the corner and then I can start with my crochet hook so I'm going to start in the top right hand corner and slip that off and then I want to pick up the next one along that's at the top and bring my hook through there and then go through the next one bring my hook through there someone asked me about the bullet head nails that I use here in Australia they're called bullet head nails and I'm not sure what they're called in the US because I had a look on Amazon and bullet head nails comes up with something different so I'm, I'm not sure what they're called but the main thing is that the head on the nail is not huge and flat um, like that doesn't explain it very well when I say flat as though it looks like it's wearing a little hat with a brim you don't want that you want something that's more rounded so that when you bring your yarn up it slips off easily enough there is like a little bit of a rim at the top of the nail head but it's it's nothing like a regular flat nail has so bullet head if you are in the US and you know what the equivalent there is please do let me know in the comments now this is my weft tail from before and I just left it there for a moment to secure it so I'm just going to undo that knot so that it's not in my way now I can turn my loom and I'm going to oops, turn my loom deal with the last knot and then when I go into this one I'm also going to pick up that weft tail and that's going to go through the last loop with the loop that's on the nail hope that makes sense so now it's kind of encased a little bit and then on to the next nails and just continue going around like that I have to apologize for the changing light here it's been a day of rain and sun and rain and sun so it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky to know where to set up okay this one doesn't want to go through as nicely so you can just manipulate it through with your fingers if you have a problem one like that Okay, so here I've got two tails. One is my starting tail. And so, and the other one's a weft. So I'm going to grab them both again. And I'll turn the loom to make it easier to see what I'm doing. And then both of those go through. And then onto the next loop. You can get pretty quick at this.
And so I'm going to carry on right around the loom until all the loops are done. Okay, so once you get to the last corner, you're going to have one loop left and at that point your pot holder will be springing off the loom. So you can put that aside. And then what you've got left is you've got some tails. So a few options for tails. You can needle weave them back into the piece or you can kind of sew them into a loop if you wanted a hanging loop for your pot holder. You can also use this last corner as a loop and just leave that as it is to, to hang um, or whatever you want. The thing to do now is it looks a little bit lopsided and that's normal and so we just want to give it a little bit of a stretch out at all sides to make it sort of come into shape a little bit better so it's more like a square. So I'm just going to finish off by needle weaving these tails back in um, and that's another thing about leaving the, the little bit of extra length in the tail is you have plenty of room to needle weave because it can be very hard to thread a needle and weave it back in if you have a very short tail left. So I'm going to be using like a jumbo size tapestry needle to do this because a normal needle, this yarn will not get through the eye of the needle. Okay, so that is our t-shirt yarn pot holder. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check out the first tutorial to learn how to make the loom and all links will be down below. And until next time, happy weaving.